Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create and use alert controllers within the Swift language. Now on the simulator, an example of what we're going to be creating today, you can see here we have a button and our label. Now just before I show you, I just want to quickly explain, alert controllers are basically the new or kind of 2.0 version of an alert view. Now they work very similar, but this is a much better, more fluid and easier way to use within your projects. Now basically what happens is we're going to press our button and it's going to display our alert. It's going to have multiple buttons and on those multiple buttons we have multiple actions. So if I go ahead and press it, it's pretty standard. We have our title and our message and our buttons underneath. Now I've opted to have two buttons on our uh, alert view. We can add more, you know, as many as you want, as many as you can fit on the screen. And we have our cancel button. Now the brilliant thing about the controller is we have the ability to simplify having actions on the buttons. And one of the great things as well, we can have an action on the cancel button, which we couldn't do before in an alert view. So we have a label on the screen which is going to be representing uh, when an action is performed. So once we press the button, it's going to change the label on the text um, to wherever we set it to, just to show you that um, an action is being performed. So if we press our button one, our label says action button one was pressed. Same goes for number two. And, and finally, we have our cancel button, which normally would have just generally dismissed the alert view. But because we can add an action on it, once we press it, cancel button was pressed. So it's a brilliant, brilliant little thing we can have within our apps. So already on my project set up, it's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named the Alert Swift Controller for the purpose of this tutorial. Now before we get started, we need to jump into our main storyboard where we're going to be building the interface for our project. So we're going to add in a button and a label, just like we have on the simulator. So I'll add in the button and space it all out. And the same goes for our label here. Now, as we are not working on any particular size screen for the iPhones, I'm just simply going to center this text. I'm just adding some quick missing constraints. You may want to add them manually if you're going to, you know, uh, design some kind of sophisticated interfaces. But I'll just quickly add them in. And I'll just change the screen size to the four. Then you can see it just resizes there nicely. We're all okay. And then we need to add some actions and outlets for the button and the label. So I'm going to space out where we're going to place both of these. And we're going to start with our label. And I'll simply name this label, add that in. And then the same goes for our button, we'll drag it down at the bottom. And I'll simply name this show alert and making sure this is selected on action and add that in. Okay, so we can close up the assistant editor and then jump into our view controller.swift as we're all done within the interface where we now have it all set up. So I'm gonna quickly space out our button here. Okay then, so creating this alert controller is quite simple. It has some of the many features that you're gonna be familiar with with creating alert views where we need to set the title and the message. And then we're gonna create as many variables as we want in terms of what buttons we want on our alert view before eventually we go to present it to our user. So to start then we need to create our variable for simply our alert um, controller. So I simply name it alert controller so easy enough to understand and see where it's been referenced. Space equals space UI alert controller. And then we do our parentheses brackets there and it's going to have now our title with our string, message, and preferred style. Now in the title here, we do the two quotation marks and whatever we put within the two quotation marks will be what will be displayed within the title section of our alert controller. So if I just simply put title, if I spell it correctly, and uh, then when we go to build and run, you can see where that text is being displayed. Same goes for the message. And then preferred style, we want it to be simply um, our dot alert. There we go making sure we've only got one parentheses on the end there because we only need one in. So now we've kind of set up in terms the alert ready to display, we now need to add the buttons in. So uh, we're going to choose to have two buttons um, and the third one will obviously be our cancel button. So how we create these is again similar to how we just created our alert controller. We need to create a variable. Now 
Creating this variable doesn't mean it's going to automatically get added to the alert. We need to create the variable and then link it into our alert controller. Okay, so we've got our variable and we'll simply call this action one. Is space going to equal space our UI alert um, action? There it is at the top. Uh, and again, do our parentheses brackets and we add in our title, our style, our handler, uh, all that stuff there that goes with it. And in the title will be what's obviously the name displayed on the button, which I'll simply call button one. The style is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be our alert action style set default, as we don't want anything you know fancy to do with it. So we do our UI alert uh, action style dot default there, and we can get rid of this handler and uh, destructive stuff there. So we just need to add all that in, and that's basically all we need to have on. We then create our parentheses down as if we're creating a simple action function statement like we've done at the top here. And then we're going to write our UI alert action in. There we go. And then underneath here is where the action will be performed once we press that button. And the action we need to perform is to get our label dot text to simply equal our two quotation marks of button one was pressed. There we go. That's all we want to do. Oh, making sure that on the label here, as we the way we added it in as an um, IB outlet, we have a self dot label. There we go. So that's basically created our first action. We can simply copy and paste it, to, and then simply change the variable name to action two, and obviously changing uh, the button one to simply button two was pressed to create our secondary button. And then we can go on to paste a third one where this will be our cancel button. If I just space out now uh, at the bottom so you can clearly see what I'm typing out. Now, the only difference this is what we're going to have on, this will be our cancel. Uh, we need to change the style to, from default to cancel, as this will change what the button does when it's clicked. So once you press it, it will automatically dismiss it anyway. And this time, we're going to change the text to simply cancel was pressed. There we go. Now we need to go on to simply add these three variable buttons to our alert controller. So our alert controller, which we called it alert controller, dot add action, and the action we're going to add first is our action one variable at the top here. So depending on how you put these now, it depends on how they display. So if I place in two more, so we've got our third one, and then finally our cancel. Now they're added in, so action one will be at the top, action two will be in the middle, and cancel will be at the bottom. Now once we've done that, we need to then present this alert controller to the user. So we do self dot present view controller. Uh, there it is, with the um, animated and the born completion. The one we need to present is our alert controller animated. We're going to simply set to true as it will have a nice little fade in effect. And the completion we simply set to nil and then finish up that with our parentheses there. Okay then, so if we go and save that there into our project and go straight to burn and run, making sure we slipped it on a simulator. And then we can go test it out. Why? No, I'm busy. I'm busy. Five minutes. What? Come back in five minutes. <clears throat> okay, then, so now once it's built on the simulator, we'll just minimize down the project. We can press our button and then we are presented with our alert controller. We have our message and title and our button one. Now, one thing I just missed out, we didn't change the title of our buttons. So I'll quickly just go back and do that. There we go. So that's the text within the button being displayed. Okay, then, so okay, we go to build and run this time. 
Now once it's loaded, I'll minimize the project so you can clearly see. So we press our button and then the alert controller that is then displayed with our button one, button two and button three, which I'll quickly go back in and I'll quickly change that to our cancel. There we go and build and run again. So we press it, so our cancel button at the bottom, which our cancel button is in a much bolder font than the two general buttons as the style of that was obviously our, instead of default, it was our cancel button. So we can press our button one, change the text in the label, button two, and then finally our cancel button. So it simply says there cancel button was pressed. So it's a brilliant way to add alerts into your project and notify users and stuff going on and give them the option to simply select some options in terms of what button they want to press. And even if they just canceled the uh, alert view, you can trigger something to happen. So, it's, you know, no matter what happens, what button they press, you can trigger your application to, to perform something um, depending on obviously again what button that was pressed. So that's simply how you create alert controllers within the Swift language. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again, you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.